Hello, and welcome to another of our short video sessions uh, dealing with some of the challenges in surgical pathology. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the intersection between radiology, uh, pathology, and clinical medicine, uh, where there truly are some challenges and uh, a lot of very rewarding opportunities as well uh, if you have a balanced understanding of those three uh, venues. So I've titled this uh, presentation, It Was Hurting My Tennis Game. Um, and uh, we'll let you see the uh, background for that. Uh, the patient is actually an 11-year-old girl who uh, began experiencing some gait problems, some back pain, hip pain uh, for the last several months, which she identified as uh, beginning about the same time that she started playing tennis seriously. So uh, eventually she came to an examination and was found uh, to have uh, no real significant findings in terms of uh, exam other than one leg was shorter than the other by about a centimeter. And that's uh, maybe not all that uncommon, but certainly uh, warrants further investigation. And so uh, naturally the radiologist can get involved here. And here's a nice uh, <clears throat> standard plain film view of her uh, proximal femurs, pelvic uh, hip joints, and so forth. And right away, we can see that her epiphyses are open. Uh, she's still growing, uh, but there's a distinction and a difference between lateralities. Uh, here in the uh, right femoral neck, uh, we have a, a sort of a mothy sclerotic lesion, maybe shortening that neck a little bit, um, right up maybe against the growth plate there with a little bit of sort of central lucency or ground glass appearance. And here on the uh, lateral view, you can see uh, maybe a little less well-defined, but there doesn't seem to be much uh, transgression, if any, of the cortex. Um, and certainly the more distal marrow spaces appear uninvolved, as uh, are the uh, uh, epiphyseal areas of the uh, greater trochanter or the uh, femoral head. So uh, of course, uh, one study is not enough and uh, the next uh, study was an MRI, uh, which shows uh, nicely here in this fat sat image that we have uh, fairly normal uh, fatty marrow here on uh, the left side, but here on the right, uh, we have lost that uh, sort of fatty appearance. Although you can see here beyond the epiphyses that the greater trochanter appears fairly normal. <clears throat> and one additional uh, view here sort of highlighting this uh, on the MRI on a fluid sensitive uh, um, indicates that there's some edema uh, in the surrounding tissues, maybe extending up uh, beyond the, the bone slightly there, uh, but uh, fairly sharply demarcated. But here we are right up against the growth plate again, so uh, raising some concern uh, associated with her further growth. So um, uh, wanting, of course, to preserve motility and preserve uh, and, uh, and evaluate this, this was somewhat on, a, on the benign side of evaluation uh, radiographically, uh, but uh, certainly the possibilities for various uh, neoplastic disorders uh, was present. And so a uh, needle biopsy was uh, obtained, which we'll look at next here. Um, this needle core, as you can see, it's a little bit on the blue side. Uh, we can see some bony spicules here, um, and we see a fair bit of uh, stromal tissue. Um, and as we come into higher magnification, we can see that there's also uh, some bone formation in this uh, uh, cellular matrix. Um, and here we can see these rounded osteoid uh, rich areas. Uh, with uh, a few uh, osteocytes uh, within the uh, bone. Um, here's some more woven bone here. Um, and uh, they're somewhat irregular shapes, uh, if you will, uh, as well. Uh, of note, we do not see any uh, prominent uh, uh, hyperplastic uh, rim uh, osteoblasts. And many of these uh, spicules are very small and rounded in quite an interesting uh, pattern here. You can see all through here. Uh, that there's many of these little rounded nodules of uh, osteoid and calcification. So uh, based on this appearance, uh, this is a very low-grade bland appearance. Uh, we rendered a more generic diagnosis of a 
benign fibroosseous lesion. Uh, this did not look to be a, a low-grade osteosarcoma. Um, and so with that, uh, the differential considerations are primarily, uh, you know, osteofibrous dysplasia or ossifying fibroma. Um, fibrous dysplasia uh, is uh, probably the more common uh, entity in this age group. And certainly in an intramedullary location, that would be the diagnosis of choice, particularly one that's producing some bony deformity. This is a disorder that, the disorder that can involve multiple bones at times, but may it be monoostotic. It's usually within the medulla and it's a slow growing lesion that can eventually lead to bony deformity. It's so slow growing that many times these lesions are asymptomatic, the patients are unaware of them, and this is discovered only incidentally when radiographs are obtained for other purposes. The central area of the, the medullary canal is often described as being sort of ground glass, very finely stippled, stippled appearance, and that may correspond to those very small spherular um, um, areas of bone formation. The bland spindle cell background with the new woven bone and an absence of osteoblastic rimming are the kind of classical pathological description. As I mentioned, these are usually younger patients, less than 30 years of age, and it's usually in the long bones. In fact, this proximal femur location is uh, the most common location. Uh, many of these are related to uh, GNAS alpha mutations that lead to a gain of function and uh, this, this disease on that basis. Of note, uh, that uh, same mutation is associated with a couple of other syndromic uh, manifestations, including McCune-Albright syndrome, and Mazabrau syndrome that we have discussed uh, previously. The differential diagnosis, as I've mentioned, includes ossifying fibroma, although this is usually more of a cortical lesion, a low-grade central osteosarcoma, uh, and in uh, some patients, uh, so-called liposclerosing myxofibrous tumor, which also is very characteristic for this proximal uh, femur location. So uh, what to do? Well, um, because of the very limited involvement, uh, our surgeons elected for some uh, fairly conservative treatment, trying to preserve the growth pate. Uh, it's generally uh, espoused that uh, when you uh, curette and pack these lesions that the fibrous dysplasia just recurs. Um, but this was felt that we might be able to obtain an acceptable result in this case. And so they use this sort of marrow evacuator or harvester uh, for the curettage uh, portion of the lesion and then uh, fixed the, the uh, bone with uh, a nice nail and some screws uh, to stabilize it and uh, pack it. Uh, we will hope uh, and wait for follow-up on uh, that particular count. So our final sign-out diagnosis, uh, the material that was obtained thus was uh, not dissimilar from what we uh, said uh, on the biopsies. As you can see, we have again this very cellular matrix with a lot of scattered, very rounded uh, areas. Now, some people uh, like to use the term, you know, sort of wandering uh, Chinese letter type of uh, uh, bony spicules, but I don't think you would see that here. This is more of a cuneiform or a, uh, um, a pointillist uh, version of uh, that uh, process, because as you can see, all of these little rounded uh, calcified zones are small areas of osteoid. Um, and no uh, significant uh, osteoblastic rimming at all in this case. So please come back and uh, review these slides because I think they're quite useful. Uh, our final sign-out diagnosis on this case was fibrous dysplasia of bone. Um, we don't know in this case whether the patient has a GNAS uh, alpha mutation uh, that may predispose her to future or further lesions, but uh, hopefully she has a monoostotic lesion and will have a good response to our uh, therapy uh, that has been provided. Well, thanks so much for joining us, and we hope that you like that. If you'll just hit that uh, subscribe button, uh, that'd be great. And if you're interested in other bone and soft tissue lesions, there's a whole bunch over here for you to uh, take a look at as well. Um, and uh, you can feel free to browse through that playlist and pick what looks of greatest interest to you. And if you're ever in Oklahoma City, I certainly invite you to stop by the uh, uh, National Cowboy Museum, where this uh, fine bronze statue of two riders on the trail uh, graces the uh, external grounds of that uh, superb museum 
uh, here at Oklahoma City. So until next time, thanks so much uh, for joining me. <laughs>